फॉर द भिंडी सब्जी ओकरा फर्स्ट वॉश द ओकरा वेल एंड पुट इट टू ड्राई ओकरा ऑफन टर्न स्लाइमी इफ इट हैज नॉट बीन ड्राइड वेल सो वॉश दैम लीव इट ऑन अ किचन टावल रब ईच पीस सो यू कैन गेट दैम ड्राई Now that my bhindi is dried I am going to chop it up Chop up the bhindi And now pay attention to this step This is a colander We are going to steam the bhindi before actually frying it this is something that is new and a different method and very crucial for oil free cooking we're going to steam the bhindi with some masalas first i'm going to add in just a little bit of salt Don't worry the masalas are not going to go down through the colander a little bit of chili powder put enough for the bindi a little bit of turmeric cumin or jeera powder coriander or dhaniya powder and amchur amchur is a very important ingredient that we would want to add in bhindi because this is what is going to stop the bhindi from getting sticky so just a little amchur now give it a good stir ensure that the masala is coating all the pieces of the bhindi there you go and we'll put it to steam so i've kept kept a pot of water to boil and i'm going to put the marinated masala bhindi on top of the pot of water so it can steam up i'll cover it and let it steam for 10 to 15 minutes before i check look at how the bhindi is steaming it's turning bright green in color and giving this lovely bhindi masala fragrance This is just about 7 or 8 minutes and I can feel that the bindi is not yet ready so I'm going to keep it on steam for a few more minutes. The bindi looks like it is done. It's going through the fork easily. And looks cooked. So I'm going to turn off the gas and take it off from the Here I'm heating a pan to prepare the bhindi sabji oil free. The pan that I'm using is a prestige pan. It's a thick bottom pan and very useful for oil free cooking. Always try to use stainless steel thick bottom pans. Do not use non-stick or pans that have got a Teflon coating because that's harmful for you. The Teflon coating melts when you're cooking and enters the food and causes damage to you in the long run. My pan is hot. I'm going to add in some cumin or jeera. Let it roast. I 
feel very new to many of you because the first thing we do when we put the pan on the stove is to put some oil. But let me show you that oil is not necessary to cook great food. The cumin is now getting fragrant and changing color to a darker brown. At this point, I'm going to add in some ginger and garlic. Here you see the ginger and the garlic is whole. I've peeled the garlic but let some thin skin of the garlic stay on. That's where the nutrition is. The ginger has not been peeled, but they have both been grated finely. You would like to keep the heat low when you cook oil free to avoid burning and sticking. And also cooking on a low heat ensures better nutrition because the heat does not destroy all the nutrients in the food. If at any point you feel like there is sticking on the pan, just add in a drop of water. And continue to stir on low heat. I'm going to add in the onions, finely chopped onions at this point. Onions have a high water content, thus making it easier to fry without oil. If you feel like the onions are sticking at any point, Check that your heat is low and you can sprinkle a little bit of salt to release more water from the onion so it can cook in its own juices. Always keep a close eye on the level of heat you're using. My onions have now reduced and become nice and brown with all the ginger and garlic. And here I'm going to add some tomatoes now into the mixture. Mix the tomatoes with the onion mixture and you can cover and cook for a few minutes. The tomatoes have now nicely mixed with the onions. So I'm going to add in a little masala. Remember we've already added masala to the bhindi. So We'll go slow here, but the mixture does require a little bit of seasoning. So here you go, some salt. A little bit of hing. Some chili powder. Haldi powder, jeera or cumin powder, a 
कोरियांडर और धनिया पाउडर एंड सम गरम मसाला जस्ट पिंच गरम मसाला ट्राई टू मेक गरम मसाला एट होम इफ पॉसिबल एज मेनी मसाला एज यू कैन मेक एट होम ट्राई टू मेक इट एट होम बिकॉज कमर्शियल वंस डेफिनेटली हैव पेस्टिसाइड्स एंड हैव प्रिजर्वेटिव दैट मेक दम लास्ट लॉन्ग इन अ रेगुलर रेसिपी you will read or it says wait until the oil starts oozing out but this mixture has got no oil and believe me you will see the same effect even in cooking without oil you notice the moisture coming out let me show you this is nicely blending together and not missing oil at all now my masala is starting to look ready it looks ready for the bhindi it's well mixed so i am going to add in the steamed masala bhindi do not waste any of the spices that have settled at the bottom of the steaming pan because it is a fairly dry sabzi i'm not going to add any water to this give it a nice stir can you say it's missing any oil i'm going to let it simmer for a few minutes so the spices and the mixture of the onion and tomatoes gets well infused with the bhindi if you have an earthen pot a clay pot that is the best pot you can use to cook your food in when you use clay pots you don't feel the need to add oil and definitely it tastes a lot better but if you do not have an earthen pot then stainless steel will do just fine be careful while mixing the bhindi we do not want to mash it up I'm going to add a little bit of almond cream just to give it a little bit of creaminess. This is the almond cream or the pulp of the almond that I removed when I made the almond milk. And this is a good chance for you to use that pulp. Throw in a few spoons. It's only going to enhance the flavor. in case you don't have any almond cream pulp at home and you want to make a creamy version of the bhindi sabji you can add cashew paste just blend in a few cashews with water and you have cashew paste ready once again keep an eye on the heat if you have increased the heat remember to lower it 
to avoid burning. The bindi looks almost done. Adding cream is optional. I had some almond pulp remaining, so I said why not add to the richness. Some kasturi methi, crush it up with your fingers. Crush it and sprinkle it over for added flavor. I hope you realized how easy it is to cook without oil and make all the delicious dishes that you have always made. You can try making this at home or any vegetable without oil and ask your family if they notice that there is no no oil. Mostly nobody will realize that there is no oil or anything missing and in fact it tastes a lot better, cleaner and healthier. Enjoy a oil free, guilt free without your arteries. Hi, you just saw a video on how to make bhindi sabji without oil. I mean, bhindi is one sabji everyone thinks that you need to put a lot of oil. People cannot believe that okra can be made without oil. Well, if it's possible, a whole lot of things are possible. Okay, so let me talk to you about oil-free cooking. Oil is not helping a human being function its best. The reasons are, when we can eat the whole food, when we can eat a coconut, an olive, some sunflower seeds, we don't need to process it into the form of an oil and consume it. Because what we do then is we take that coconut, we squeeze it all out and pull the fat, which is the oil, out and then consume it. Whereas we're throwing away all the good nutrition. Many people believe that the Mediterranean diet is amazing because of the amount of olive oil. But well, it is amazing because they consume a whole lot of fruits and vegetables on a daily basis. And therefore, consuming oil is not necessary for our body. As human beings, we create our own cholesterol and our own good fat. Fat can be consumed in the form of coconuts, nuts, seeds, avocados um, and many other food and almost that's just perfect for our being. So oil feed cooking is really easy. It's a matter of changing our mindset, of changing what we've been told all these years. You put a pan on the gas and the first thing you do is throw in some oil. But well, that's not really the only way. If we can try to retrain our mind and think in new possible ways, it's very easy. But first, let's have the motivation to do that, to understand why oil is harming our body. Let me give you an example. This is a bottle of water. Now imagine this is your vein. These are your arteries in your body. The water is the blood. This is your body. The blood flows through your arteries and your veins all the time. The blood is what takes nutrition to different parts of your body and makes you healthy and nourished. Blood also carries oxygen and when your blood is free flowing in your body without any obstruction and your veins are wide and good and clean, that's when you will be in your best state of health. Now imagine 
you add in oil. You add in oil into your body. And then what happens? Do you see? The oil is sticking to your arteries. The flow of blood in your body has slowed down because of the oil that's making it thick and making it difficult to flow. Now imagine that's just one day's worth of oil. Imagine a lifetime consuming oil in your body. Well, I think I made my point. We don't need to consume food that clog our arteries, that clog our veins. By the time when we are 50 or 60, it is not necessary to have a bypass surgery or heart disease or high cholesterol. Even diabetes is caused by fat in your body. If we can get rid of that drop of oil every single day that you put on your pan, you will be saving your life and the life of your family. I just showed you how it's possible and I hope you try to practice that. Thank you.